<laughs> What's up everybody? How's it going everybody? My name is Rishraf and welcome back to the channel. I think you just watched the guy fighting the fridge. Okay, so that actually gives me the idea for making a fridge fighting system. Or not fridge fighting system, a fridge storage system, which should be upcoming. So, today we're going to be going over uh, to more of a tutorial base on how to give a player a UI. And when you're giving a UI, you could give it the main three ways. So let's get into the video. So, to give a player UI, we're going to start off by saying, how about they touch the part? So we're going to go and insert a part named touch part. I'm going to go and insert a screen UI into the starter UI. And then I'm just going to name it, I'm going to name it give UI. And I'm just going to insert a simple text button just right there. I'm going to go and cut that. I'm going to paste this UI in, inside of the touch part. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead inside of the touch part. I'm going to insert a script. And inside of the part, we're going to go ahead and say script.parent.touched. And touch should automatically come up. So you can have touch ended when they, when they stop. It's like an on collision exit when they stop touching the part. Well, for this case, we're going to go touched, connect. Script is basically writing itself at this point. The Kickstarter actually hit its goal, and I would like to thank everyone for that. Thank you to all those who donated. And we're going to say local PLR equals, and don't forget to actually add a parameter here saying hit. Now, on a Roblox function, most of the time, nine times out of 10, you'll see, you'll always have the parameter and it's going to be the player who activated it. So equals, now the player is going to be game.players. There's many ways of getting the players. You can watch my previous videos for that information. And get player from character. And like mentioned in my previous videos, the character and the player itself are two different things but they are related. So in this case, we're getting the character and we're trying to get the player portion. And we're going to say if, now if there's a PLR, you don't need parentheses, but I use parentheses because I'm C sharp coder. And what we're going to do it, if there's a player, and we're going to say, and add another if statement, if I'd like to add an, then if, and sorry about that. And good. If, the player dot player GUI find first child and this now this is very important this is going to be give UI spelling has to be exact and so you're probably like Rishraf when they touch the part what if they keep wanting to touch it it's gonna keep spamming a UI now this is where this if check comes in now if the player has if the player has the ui then we're just going to return or do nothing we can say actually we'll print i would use a return but we're going to print player already has ui and then we're going to add an else oops an else If else, we're going to say just else script dot give, sorry, dot parent dot give UI clone. You can't give the UI to the player. You would, you would not clone it if you're just giving it a one time thing to the player and only one time to be used. So we're going to clone it. I'm going to replicate that. And we're going to set the parent to the player dot player GUI. Awesome. Have this script and we're going to go and run it. And what we're, I'm actually going to do is I'm going to anchor this part. 
And this also works if can collide is off. People are like, well, you can't touch it, so why would touch? It, it still it's turns into a trigger then. Once we make sure that the code is correct, we're gonna go ahead and play it. No errors in the code, which is good. We're gonna wait and boom, we got the button. And you see that we only got it once. We can go ahead and actually go to players, my username, player GUI, give UI is only one time. So the code actually executes so fast that it can check that we already have the UI. Now the if statement is way better than using a bool value because bools can get confusing. So this way you're just checking if they already have the UI, then nice, they already have it. But if they don't, boom, else give the player the UI. Okay, so next we're gonna be making a click part and nothing too complicated about click. It's actually the same exact thing. And with the click detector, it's basically like that little icon that you see. I'm gonna go and paste the give UI into the give into the click part. Open up the script, and we're gonna say script.parent.clickdetectors. Click detector is actually very easy. It's easier than touched. Click. Wait a minute. It doesn't auto complete. If it doesn't auto complete, that means that we're missing something. So we can actually insert a click detector here and Roblox Studio automatically detect, click detector, now it auto completes. And I'm gonna say dot mouse click, built-in function, connect, function, parentheses. I don't like how it auto completes, weird, player. And as mentioned earlier in the video, that if you have nine times out of 10 a built-in function, player will automatically be a parameter. And we're gonna say player, wait, for child and actually then we're gonna go ahead and say same if statement if player find first child and give UI make sure the spelling is correct then print already has UI we're going to say if, or sorry, else, else just means the opposite of the if. So I can do if they don't have it, then give it, else, print, they already. So it's just the opposite of the if statement. That's all an else is. And we're going to say, we're going to actually go script.parent.giveUI clone.parent, clone.parent. You can't say clone equals the player's UI. You have to say the parent of. And you just say dot parent, that's parent of equals player dot player GUI. Is before we actually test, we're gonna say dot player GUI. I don't know what I was thinking. So player dot player GUI. And actually before we test here, we're gonna say find first child, not first first child. That just sounds dumb. So um, a little thing in advance guys, if you guys want to see what I have next, join the discord and go ahead and hit the community tab. There we got it. And if we go ahead and click it again, we'll see the debug state, the debug statement already has UI. So that's the second way. Now the third way I like to do it is to do it when they go in the game. So they can get like the teams changer or something like that. And I am for hire by the way. So just hit that discord. So. Let's go ahead and insert a script into the server script service, keep our game nice and organized. And we're gonna say game.players.playeradded connect function. And for the third time, guys, I'm gonna keep saying this. We're gonna go ahead and get the built-in parameter, it's player. It's automatically gonna send that parameter to us. And what we can do is if player, this is this is not really needed. I just do it just in case. There's a hacker. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it's like a filtering enabled thing. If there actually is really a player, we can say, now here, you can't insert the GUI into the actual, into the actual server script service. So make it a child of the script and we'll say script.giveUI. Notice how we didn't say script.parent because the parent is server script service and the giveUI is actually the child of the script only dot clone or 
colon clone and we'll say dot parent parent of really player dot player gui awesome so we have the ui thank you guys so much for watching now i heard i got a lot of 20 plus comments saying that the car crash system is actually you guys want it for leader stats and where it doesn't reset so i'm currently recoding the whole thing and i will definitely make another youtube video on that but thank you guys so much for the 1.8 subscribers 1.8 thousand subscribers guys so amazing love every single one of you and if you guys want anything done just let me know in the comments have a great day stay safe during these coronavirus times Listen.